for taking 10 for CNN 10, your down the middle explanation of world news. I'm Carl Azus. Our first topic this Thursday, for the time being, the U.S. Supreme Court is allowing the Trump administration to continue keeping certain immigrants and refugees from entering the U.S. What's known as the government's travel ban temporarily prevents the immigration of certain people from Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. It also puts America's refugee resettlement program on hold. The Trump administration has argued that this will help keep the U.S. safer from people who might pose a threat to Americans. Critics have argued that this will only harm refugees who pose no threat to Americans. Last week, a federal appeals court ruled that refugees who've been promised legal resettlement in the U.S. would be exempted from the ban. That means as many as 24,000 people who were originally blocked by the ban would be allowed to immigrate in spite of it. The Trump administration objected to the appeals court's ruling, and yesterday the Supreme Court blocked it. That means the government's order will stand keeping those would-be immigrants out of the U.S. This is one step in a bigger legal process. The Supreme Court has not decided whether the Trump administration's travel restrictions as a whole will be allowed. It's scheduled to take up that subject on October 10th. 10 second trivia. Which of these U.S. landmarks is 90 miles away from Cuba, Miami, Florida, Southernmost Point, Key Largo, or Everglades National Park? Southernmost Point, a marker and tourist attraction in Key West, is 90 miles from Cuba. And though it sits by the water, the Southernmost Point Monument doesn't usually sit in it. In this video, it looks like it sustained some damage in Hurricane Irma. Despite flooding on the island, Key West wasn't the worst hit place when Irma came ashore in the Keys as a Category 4 storm. In areas to the east, like Kudjo Key and Big Pine Key, some homes were completely destroyed. One resident there says there's no power, no cell service, no running water, no gasoline. But a lot of progress is being made across the Keys as a whole. Debris has been cleared out of 80% of the roads. Strict building codes have preserved many of the homes. Water is flowing in the upper Keys. Cell service is being restored, and some hospitals are opening back up. Throughout the state of Florida, about 3.8 million people were still without electricity last night. More than half a million had the same problem in Georgia and neighboring states. The storm had some sort of impact on nine states and killed 33 people in the U.S. But overall, the country fared better than several parts of the Caribbean, where at least 44 people were killed and entire islands were decimated. You can get an idea of what they've been through by seeing what the hardest hit part of the Florida Keys looks like. The destruction you haven't seen. The first key, Key West, disabled by Irma. No power, water, gas. No hope for better anytime soon. And yet these scenes, backed up by the fact that so few lost their lives, a better than expected outcome. But each step closer to Kudjo Key, where Irma's evil eye made landfall, devastation. Blocks of debris, downed power lines, and mutilated memories, tempest tossed. More severe than anywhere else in Florida. First responders of Task Force 2 in Florida doing search and rescue have never seen anything like this. How do you make sense of all these houses are gone and then this house is standing? Look at the draw, I guess. Big Pine Key. Not a big pine to be seen here. Houses splintered, gone. Boats everywhere, reminding streets were rivers for hours. Ground littered with personal effects. One tape, a surreal suggestion. Yes, that says, gone with the wind. I mean, it looks like you had a crew with sledgehammers in yep. here who were angry at somebody. You're, you're, you're right, Mother Nature, she does what she wants when she wants to. This is where the eye hit. Um, so that's why we're, we're focusing our primary search efforts here. Another house blown off its slab and collapsed. A search dog gets excited. The saws and anxious looks come out. Thankfully, nothing worse than spoiled meat this time. Each block can take hours to clear. Shouting, sawing, searching, sweaty, sleep-deprived saviors work all day into night and day again. Everywhere you walk, a horror of the unknown. And yet for all that's lost, people remain. They come to us shell-shocked and with the same request. 
to use our satellite phone to call and tell loved ones they're alive. This young family lost their home, solace and survival, and a beautiful son who will still have a future. But this is so hard. I, I can't even, the water's still in the house. I can't even get in there yet. More come, desperate to tell their kids they're okay. Hey, Jess, I'm alive. To tell siblings they made it. Leslie, it's your incredibly awesome brother. Me and mom are okay. Kind of wiped out down here. Uh, we'll get in touch with you whenever we can, but we're okay. All right, bye. This mother and son have each other and their sense of humor. You're the best thing I've seen all day. I want you to know. Flying for how long? No, no. The best I've seen all day. They'll need both to make it through the next few weeks and months. Oui, Yves, c'est Marie. Even speaking French, the message is clear. I made it, and I will never stay for a hurricane again. The main thing I said, I don't care. Even if we don't have a house, we can rebuild. But as long as we were safe, you know. Here in what was once paradise, so many say they don't know when they'll look at the sky the same way again. Is it true that the more time you spend sitting, the less time you'll spend living? A new study published this week in the Annals of Internal Medicine suggests long periods of sitting down are a risk factor for early death, even if you exercise. Of course, many Americans aren't doing enough of that either. More than 80% of adults are estimated to fall short of strength training twice a week and getting at least two and a half hours of aerobic activity weekly. But if the sitting is making things worse, there is a silver lining. The study found that people who take a break to move around every 30 minutes have the lowest risk of early death. It's a wake-up call for all of us to get on our feet. I have sat more than just about anybody else. In fact, I was calculating this the other day just based on my travel alone. I have traveled enough to have circumnavigated the earth a hundred times. And I know that sitting can be really bad for you. We humans did not evolve to be sitting creatures. We evolved to be naturally moving all day long. In fact, some people have called sitting the new smoking. One of the big concerns is something known as DVT, deep venous thrombosis. Think of these clots that are forming in the deep veins of your legs. The blood's just not moving very well there, so the clots start to form. That can be painful to your leg. Your best bet, if you're forced to sit, is to try and get the blood moving, simply doing some exercise with your legs, spinning your feet around to actually get the blood flowing. Make sure to drink plenty of water, and if you can, get up and walk around. That's your best bet to live to 100. It happened in 1932 and 1984. Now it's set to happen again in 2028. Los Angeles, California has been selected to host that year's Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games. The announcement was made yesterday after the city promoted its ability to safely, responsibly, and sustainably put on the events. It'll receive a $2 billion contribution from the International Olympic Committee to help with the substantial costs of hosting the Games. We're not sure if the LA 2028 committee intended the pun when they called this a golden opportunity, but they showed more than a silver of excitement about it. And while talking about it now is all fun and games, there will be a lot of training over the next 11 years before we IOC the events on U.S. soil. I'm Carl Azus, and we hope you score that show a perfect CNN.